Hello, and welcome to Rehab and Recovery with Dr. Miles Sandoval. I am Dr. Miles Sandoval. I'm a physical therapist providing online recovery coaching and meal support to help my clients relapse-proof their recovery for life. I've been doing a few videos on the principles of neuroplasticity in addiction recovery. Today's video is going to expand on the second principle of neuroplasticity according to Klein and Jones 2008 article. I will post the link in the description, but if you haven't seen the first two videos, uh, an introduction as well as a discussion on their first principle, I'd highly recommend you go back and watch those, which I will also post in the description below. So Climb and Jones' second principle of neuroplasticity, really it's the first, and I switched their first and second principles, is use it or lose it. And put most simply, it means that habits that you don't practice regularly, especially skills, tend to degrade over time. And this applies both to physical habits, like knowing how to ski or knowing how to ride a unicycle, as well as cognitive habits or cognitive pathways, like knowing a foreign language. And as, as we all know, this mostly refers to learning in adults, because the the brain in early childhood is like a sponge and can pick up a lot of these different motor and cognitive skills and hold on to them for life. But anybody who's tried learning a foreign language as an adult probably can relate to the use it or lose it principle, where if you go a period of time without practicing that foreign language, you might find that it's harder to hold a conversation when you try to jump right back into it. So how does this all relate to addiction recovery? That same use it or lose it principle also applies for our pathways for emotional regulation. Like I talked about in the first video, we kind of develop when we practice a habit again and again and again and again, we reinforce that habit in the brain. And that applies both to motor skills, like uh, driving a certain route, making the same turns from work to home, like I talked about in the first video. But it also applies to the way that our thoughts chain. And so if you typically respond to feedback at work by starting a thought chain of worry, like, what if my boss doesn't think that I'm performing well enough and then jumping to, well, what if I lose my job? What if, if I lose my job, then I'm going to lose my house and then I won't have a place to stay. So there's a chain in that scenario. There's a chain of increasing worry. And if that is your habit, then that's something that will be reinforced in, in emotionally similar situations, chaining a small worry onto a bigger worry onto a bigger worry. And um, it leads to some very afflictive emotions or, or high intensity anxiety that's usually not a very comfortable place to be. So if we have lost touch with our ability to emotionally regulate in healthy ways. The good news is that 
use it or lose it is really more like if you lost it, then you'll have to find it again. But it's not a, a permanent loss. Just like learning a foreign language, if you make a time investment and you get to a place where you're conversational in another foreign language, even if you don't practice it for a while, you can achieve that level of being able to converse. Once again, if you practice it again. And the same thing applies in addiction recovery, where if you've lost touch with how to emotionally regulate, you might have to find it again, or you might have to make a new definition for what that means to you. But I like to think that that vocabulary or that conception is a little bit more gentle than just use it or lose it. So I hope that helps you understand Kleiman Jones' second principle of neuroplasticity a little bit better. Uh, feel free to comment below with any questions you might have. And uh, consider thinking of it as uh, if you lost it, you might have to look for it for a little bit before you can find it. But it's there and it's available for you to tap into just like the first principle, anything we practice, we can improve. In my next video, we'll be talking about the third principle of neuroplasticity. So stay tuned for that. I hope this was helpful. Please like, subscribe, and share with any other armchair neuroscientists who might be hoping to learn a little bit more, and especially if they could benefit from applying it to their life in recovery. I'll talk to you all again very soon.